um, uh, to ask, uh, do, uh, do guardian angels uh, really exist? Do angel uh, do guardian angels uh, exist? I was uh, I was looking at something from um, uh, Sister Ellen White, and I think there's a quotation that he says that uh, a guardian angel is appointed to every follower of Christ. His heavenly watches shield the righteous from the power of the wicked one. When we look at uh, the book of Psalms or Psalms 91 and verse 11, uh, reading the NIV uh, translation, it says that uh, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. For he will command his angels concerning you uh, to guard you in all your ways. Our speaker tonight, he is uh, the CEO of uh, the Adventist Angel Watch. It is an online uh, radio, uh, which is based in Kisi. And um, the name of the presenter is uh, King Osiemo. Uh, King Osimo, I know that uh, you, you're online and you're listening to me. Really I invite cute. you to uh, speak to the oh, online nice. audience. Uh, uh, who majority forms, um, who majority are members of uh, the SDA uh, Upper Hill Springs Church. Uh, Karibu uh, Osimo. Uh, thank you so much. I hope I can be heard. Yes, brother, thank you so much. I hope I can be heard uh, clear enough. Yes. Yes, you're all right. Thank, thank you, thank you. First of all, I want to apologize because my neighbor was not so good uh, in the room, so I had to uh, get out somehow to try as much as possible. I've also tried to share my screen. Uh, it seems there is a, a problem yet, but I am going to outside. I want to share my screen so that uh, everybody can see. But we can anyway move just uh, together. I can request. Uh, so my name for. So, 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 uh, I can request all of us kindly to mute our mics uh, to avoid the uh, interruptions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. So we are going to have a Bible study this evening. And as my brother said, my name is uh, King Osiemo, and I'm glad to be with you this evening, even as we study together. Uh, let's humble ourselves as we pray, even as we start. Almighty Father, the King of the universe, I wonder with thy name in all the earth, and your name is resounded to all nations of the earth. Father, as we are, we are going to study. I pray that you guide us to the glory. Let our Holy Spirit take care. So we have uh, planned a topic known as Accuse Me Not, which we are going to have uh, this evening. And uh, Accuse Me Not. Before I do my further introduction, we know who is our accuser, the, the accuser of our brethren. Uh, actually, it's the devil from the very beginning. But also in these last days, we have the same general 
who is upon the earth and is the accuser of our brethren. So we are being encouraged that we should be careful. So we want to study the character of the devil while, uh, or Satan or Lucifer while he was in heaven. He was an of the brethren. As he was falling from by where the light they one and the two. I wish I could have shared my screen. You could have enjoyed so much. But uh, it, uh, it has some kind of a network problem. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and the 2. The Bible says these words. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresy, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So in this uh, chapter, we are giving, we are actually finding an introduction by an uh, illustration that there were false pro uh, prophets. Who uh, were found among the of these last days. Actually, they would be welcoming swift destruction. When you understand this kind of destruction, I want you to figure out the time of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. And the many, the Bible says, uh, Second Peter chapter 2, And the many shall follow their penish rules shall be. Second Peter, two. Uh, second Peter chapter two verses two uh, is the same as uh, uh, Psalms one nineteen verses thirty. If you can go to your Bible, Psalms one nineteen verses thirty. It is says, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So some says, I have chosen the way of truth. So this falling away is when people shall forsake the commandments of God. They shall forsake the judgments of God. They shall forsake the commandments of God. Because when the Lord, when the Lord commands with support for his first estate, uh, God rejected the commands of God. So in these last days, we shall also, uh, we should in these last days, we should also find the same. Uh, so let's see. As we three, we are going to study general second Peter in a much sense. Verses three, the Bible says, uh, and through covetousness, shall uh, they with the faith words make. days of you whose judgments now of a long time angels that into chains of in heaven, if the Lord spared not the angels, who 
of second sorry sorry i uh, as, as i said my network is not so much friendly sorry for that but i was reading from the book of uh, second peter second peter chapter 2 verses 3 and we have said that uh, god never spared the angels in heaven when they did sin when they did fall from their first estate god brought his judgment what about in these last days remember these angels are uh, delivered into chains of darkness they are waiting for their judgment which is to come uh, let's see the book of uh, The book of, of Isaiah, fifteen. I kindly request that um, uh, my sister Masita, if you could uh, sing one song as I get to talk uh, with the speaker to see whether we can be able to go through this challenge of uh, the network. Um, Masita, kindly, kindly come in uh, with a song. Hello everyone. Um, we are going to sing song number 569 that was uh, <clears throat> as intended earlier, sorry for the noise. Um, pass me not, O oh gentle savior. Pass me not. Gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art going, you pass me by. Let me other full of my. Find a sweet relief Nearing there in deep contrition Help my unbelief Savior, Savior Hear 
Amen. Uh, my sister, uh, Cheria, uh, Cheria Mbati, uh, I'm happy to see you online. Kindly uh, sing as one song as uh, uh, the, our speaker is uh, uh, making means to see whether I can get a different network. Sister Cheria. Celestine Kemuma, you could also uh, come in if you're, if you're ready. Seemingly, Cheria is still uh, preparing. Are you getting me? Uh, yes, we are now. Okay. Let me sing number one. Oh. Two, three, 48. I'm sorry. Mm. 
Wow, sorry. <clears throat> Uh, even when I got one, please can uh, proceed. There's a problem with my phone. Uh, Celeste, Um, can we can we see? Is is a lesson around or we can sing? Let, let me sing. <clears throat> okay. I'm singing number one ninety five, please. I'm sorry for the delirians. There shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of love. There shall be seas of refreshing. Then from the Savior above, showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we please. There shall be showers of blessings, fresh and refining again. All the hills and the falling, sound of abundance of rain. Show us of blessings, show us of blessings we need. Once the troops round us are falling, but for the showers we please. There shall be showers of blessings, send them upon us alone. Grant to us now as refreshing. Come on now, honor thy word. Show us of blessings. Show us of blessings we need. Mercy troops, Lord, us are falling. But for the showers we please. There shall be showers of blessings, all that today they might fall. Now as the Lord we are confessing, now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need. Mercy trust round us are falling, but for the showers we please. Amen. 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 I think we uh, we are getting a solution. Uh, give it about two minutes. We will be ready. We've uh, found a different solution to enable this presenter uh, come on board. Uh, Masita, at least say the one or two chorus, and uh, before then the presenter comes in to invite the presenter again. Hello again. So, this time um, uh, I can see the presenter is ready. Okay. Uh, please, uh, King Osimo, uh, please, uh, we hope uh, we've already. I sorted out the issue. Welcome, Osimo. Yes, I've, uh, I've tried my level best. I, I believe uh, it can now work. Um, I also 
wanted to share my screen, I've changed uh, everything. I believe now everything can work so that you can also see, even as we. Yeah, this is better now. We can be able to see your screen. You can be seen. Okay, that's right. And, uh, I can appear that position and move uh, very fast. So thank you. So, so we were studying about uh, false prophets in the last, and also we are also saying that uh, in these last days, there is a falling away from uh, uh, from truth, just like something happened. Uh, something happened in heaven. There was a kind of a rebellion in heaven. And, uh, and even in these last days, there is the same thing of coming from the which he wants to uh, get the people. So, thank you. Here is where I was. We shared, we said in Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, that in the last days there shall be false prophets. We saw it generally. And uh, the last line of uh, chapter 2, verse 2 was saying, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. We saw that one. We saw also equated from the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 30, which was saying, uh, I have chosen the way of truth. What is this way of truth? Thy judgments have I laid before me. So the laws of uh, know that we are the commandment keepers. The book of John chapter 14 verse 15 says, uh, if you love me, keep my commandments. So it is last holding the books. Also Second Peter chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 was saying, and through covetousness, they uh, shall they with feigned words make majesties of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingered not. Who are these making merchandise of us? Who are these who are making merchandise? Actually, they are selling us. Who are these? These are the same people who at first were holding the truth firm to the end. But at the long run, you find that these people have apostatized. They have actually uh, run away from the truth. For if God spared not the angels, God is giving now an example of what happened in heaven to the people of the last generation, where false prophets would arise who would forsake the truth. If God knows, if God, uh, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into uh, chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So let's see in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 15, we said, the ancient and the honorable, he is the head. If indeed we are, uh, you know, ancient are grown up people. Ancients, the Bible usually uses the example of a child and an old person. It, when Paulo says, when I was a child, I was thinking like a child, but now I am old. So if we are Asian, Asian and honorable, then we should lead the people. He is the head. And the prophet that teaches lies he is the tail. That's what we have already seen in the book, of, in the starting verse, that there shall be false prophets in the last days. These people shall not be the head. They shall then not be leading the people because they have forsaken the truth. They don't lay the judgment of God before them. They don't know that the Lord is leading them. It's the tale. Let's see this area was saying uh, in the Revelation chapter 12, verses, uh, verses 4, it says, And is they drew the third part of the The stars of heaven, and it for was laid delivered for to devour a child as soon as it was born. So we find yes, I think yes, yes, sorry, uh, uh, they represents 
are false prophets. Lies. It's actually a representation of uh, the same. Let's see. Here is a dragon who deceived other angels in heaven. The stars represents messengers. As you know, the book of uh, Job chapter 38, that verse 7, I believe, says that uh, when the morning stars were singing, when the Lord was creating the universe. So it is a, pre a representation of the angels. Remember, angel comes from the word angelus, meaning a messenger, someone who has a message. So in these last days, God as a people, who like you see this woman who was ready to deliver, they must deliver as well. How are they going to deliver? They must share the word. They must start knowing that the judgments of the Lord is just before them. In Isaiah chapter 66, verse 8 says, Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? So the earth is a representation of a nation. And what is this nation? We know that very well the book of uh, I believe first Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. People have been chosen, set aside. But a holy call. So that the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or a, shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So it, Zion is the church of God. It's, it is the city which is upon the hill to show the people, to direct the people to the truth. These are the stars which are shining. Uh, as the shepherd is to look after the lost sheep, so this is a quote from Testimony to the Church of Volume 13, page 26, which says that as the shepherd is to go after the lost sheep, it's not to have merely a casual interest, but an interest to avail for souls. So as God's people who have been chosen, remember when the children of Israel entered the promised land, they stopped conquering the nations. They just compromised. You realize in the book of Judges, chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible says, the Lord Jesus Christ comes to the people and he's saying, why have you done this? I commanded you that you should not make a league with the nations, but now I cannot differentiate you. You are just looking like the world. That's why the Lord now came and he was speaking to the people. So now he says, as the shepherd is to go after the lost sheep, it's not to have merely a casual interest, but an interest to a very poor souls. This calls for most honest at searching most honest prayer for seeking for God. So we need to be ready before we approach, before we go to look for the lost souls. Uh, prayer for seeking for God in order that we may know him and the power of his grace. So generally, if we want to know God, we must know uh, the penalty, how he paid our price. And we should go to seek these lost souls because the night is coming. So in the book of uh, Christ Object Lessons, page 305, paragraph 1, it says, A nation is sin and a nation is ruin were due to the religious leaders. In that time, it was because of the religious leaders that the church did fall. So let's see the full quotation. It says, In our day are not the same influences at work, or if the husbandmen of the Lord is divine, are not many following in the steps of the Jewish leaders, is not a judge following the same path, even as it is today? Okay, that says the Lord in the book of Micah chapter 3, verse 5. Uh, is it that the church is following the same path? Remember, in heaven there were two groups of angels. One did fall, and another one remained faithful. Even in these last days, ever from the very beginning, it has been the same case. Even in the time of the the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. There were those people who are representing God and others are the foreign. Let's see. Micah chapter 3, verse 5. Huh? That says the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people to error. What is this forest, forest prophets? What are these leaders doing? They make God's people to error, that they fight with their teeth and they cry peace. You know, the function of our mouth is to eat, to fight, to eat. But what are they eating? What are they giving to the people? So these leaders were supposed to, to take this food like a pad. You know, the pad usually uh, crushes the food and gives to, uh, uh, it gives to, uh, to the rich ones. But let's see, these people, they do fights 
the food and they give the people a different message. What are they saying? They cry peace. And the law does not put these things in their mouths. They even prepare war against him. I believe in the book of Revelation chapter 17, elsewhere, I believe verses, chapter 17 verses around 12, 13, it says uh, those that is making war with the people of God, in one sense, how do we, how do people make war with God in the person of his saints? If they persecute God's people, they are making war against God. Let's see. Uh, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 5 to 8, we continue. It was saying these words. And God spared not the old word, but saved no the eighth person, a preach of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. What happened in that time is that only no was found. One thing he was doing, he was traveling for those souls. He was traveling for those who were lost. That is a church which he was ready to share in that time. God spared not that whole world, but he saved only Renu because he was found to be righteous, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And he also turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. He condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensemble unto those that after should live ungodly. So God gave an example, even as it is, it is, it is today, so that people can learn. And they just delivered only Lord from that city. So God has his people in these last days. God does not work with martyrs. So long as those people follow his path, then they will be saved. Only Lord vexed, uh, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. You know, Lord, real, Lord uh, realized how wicked the generation was. So he was considering him upon his heart. How was it with his soul? How was it with his family? So he was thriving on that side. In these last days, we have been given a commission, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4, that as the angels are doing the sealing work, because we know it is the sealing time in these last days, as the angels are, sealing, are doing the sealing time, are, seal, are sealing God's people in their foreheads, we must be sighing and crying for the abominations which are being done both in the church and in the world. Because we have seen the ancient and the honorable, he is the head. So also in the book of Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4, we realize that judgment must begin in the house of God. And if it begins in the house of God, what about us? So we must check ourselves when we see things happening all around us. What are we supposed to do? Why are we here? We are to shine. We are not to be like the fallen stars. So in... Uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4, already you have seen it says, and the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, go through the midst of Mount Zion, Mount, go through the midst of uh, Jerusalem, and uh, set a mark, set a seal upon the men that sigh and uh, cry. They don't listen, they don't keep quiet that it is happening. No, they must sigh, they must give prophecy, they must show the people where we have come from. Because I writing page 63, paragraph 1 says, we have many precious truths. He says, uh, <laughs> actually, I can paraphrase. He says, there are many precious truths contained in the word of God. But it is the present truth the church needs now. Such subjects as the sanctuary message, the Ten Commandments, the Three Angels messages, these are the things which will unite the church. And actually, it will bind us together. Not another message. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 8 says, in seeing and hearing, Lord vexed his righteous soul from day to day uh, with the, uh, the unrighteous deeds. So we should be doing the same. Then in chapter 4, verse 25, uh, <laughs> uh, there is something here uh, which I want us to understand from that second Peter chapter 2. There was a... Uh, um, in the book of second Peter, if you can go to your Bible, in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 10, I did not include that one, I've seen, I forgot it. Chapter 2, verse 10 was saying, but chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the last of uncleanness and despise government. Who are these kind of people who despise government? In the book of Daniel chapter 4, verse 25, uh, find that God was giving, uh, was teaching in the book of Nebuchadnezzar 
that he should know that the God of heaven is ruling. The God of heaven is in control of everything which is upon the earth. They should acknowledge the government of heaven. So because the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, they never wanted to hear the message. Like it was in the time of Nu, they never wanted to hear the message to follow the path the Lord was leading. They never wanted the government of heaven to lead them, to be the head. So 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 10 says, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the last of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, self-willed. They never wanted God in their part. They think about self, their own judgments. They are not afraid to speak evil of divinities. So this is a quotation I saw like it was, come, it was coming from Daniel chapter 4, verse 25, which says that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be which the beast of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as the oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and the seven times shall pass over thee. Here thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. God, these people have been set at, at a place. They should know that the Lord, the Lord of heaven is ruling among men. If we don't support this, Same part. God says, I will raise another movement. Uh, just was a, a call which was coming. Sorry for that. It was a, just a call by. So let's continue from uh, where we are. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, so we should realize that it is the Lord who is leading this church. Uh, and uh, if we not uh, for the same part, you know what happened in heaven? There were two groups of angels. So let's see Second Peter chapter 2, verse 12 says, But this, as natural brute beast, made to be taken and destroyed, who are these to be destroyed? They speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Why were these people to be destroyed? Why is it that these people are to be destroyed? Because they make war against God. Because they set themselves as lords. And uh, actually, they despise the government of heaven to lead them. They despise the spirit of the Lord. Let's see. Luke chapter 15, verse 15. Let's see a person who despises the leadership of his father. Here is a prodigal son. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And they sent him into his field to feed. So, Remember the brother for war. He was eating like the war you put him. He was eating with the swine, they're clean. That is why the book of Revelation says uh, uh, to come out of uh, Papron. People should actually get to their senses and return to their uh, high estate. But this as natural proof of I read that one, let's see or say chapter 13, verse 9 and 13 says, Oh Israel. Thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thy help. If the prodigal son could have realized that in the Lord was his help, in his father's house was many mansions, there were good things. So the sorrows of traveling woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son. Israel is my son, God speaks. For he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. So Israel must realize and come back to his master. Uh, also, Osea chapter 9, verse 9, they have deeply corrupted themselves as in the days of Gibeah. Therefore, he will remember their iniquity. He will visit their sins, Osea chapter 9, verse 9. So two things is happening. They have corrupted themselves. Number two, God will remember. God remembered Sodom and Gomorrah. God will remember as well in these last days. What happened in Gibeah? There were Sodomites in Gibeah. That one you can understand in the book of Judges chapter 19. It speaks of a, a messenger who was passing through a city of Gibeah. He wanted somewhere to rest. He wanted somewhere to rest. 
but uh, these people never welcomed him. But instead, they took his wife, they corrupted him, they defiled his wife. What did he do next? It is evil. It was actually, it was actually uh, not even to be mentioned. Judges chapter 19, verse 18, it says, And there is no man that received, received me to house. So these people, they never received that guest who was passing in that city. Remember, in these last days, we are also encouraged that angels will be passing. Will we welcome them? No, uh, as far as the angels will appear in the form of men, remember also that this Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord, is represented as an, an angel, a messenger. Will we welcome him into our hearts to lead us to do God a service? Now, as they were, make, now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, he set the house round about, uh, uh, round about. So see what was happening here. These people never wanted to welcome the visa, but someone welcomed them to his house. But the men of the city came, and as they did in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, so they were doing in this uh, sense. So they took actually his wife. Generally, uh, if you go and read in chap that chapter. Uh, what they wanted, they wanted actually the people of that house. They wanted the people, they wanted even the woman who was in that house. You could understand how the case of Sodom and Gomorrah was. Let's see, in James chapter 5, verse 13, remember here, these people were merry. These people here, they were making their hearts merry. They were rejoicing. Even in these last days, we should be uh, in the house of the Lord, we should be making, we should be singing in the Psalms. Uh, the Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 13, Is any among you afflicted? So, what are we supposed to do in these last days? Which is any Mary? Let him sing psalms, no upper chamber Pentecost. Uh, uh, actually, ch uh, upper chamber Pentecost. We should realize what was happening in the time of Pentecost and be ready as well. Let's see. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 12, verse says, And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from hence, for thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. So in these last days, these people who are to perish is that they have corrupted themselves. They have uh, run away from their high estate. They are quickly turned aside out of the way. Are we following the way of our predecessors? Are we following the way of the light as it is leading us so that we can follow what the Lord speaks from his word, which I commanded them. They have made them a mortal image Remember what they did Mount, um, Mount Sinai, just as they were to, to enter the promised land. <clears throat> Let's see. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and a crooked generation. This is the same voice which should be heard from the modern who, the modern John the Baptist. He said to them, a crooked generation. He used the same words in that time. Even Jesus Christ used them, and they said uh, it's a generation of God, of serpents. So in these last days, the same people of God, the true angels of God and all messengers of God, they should point sin by its right name. Because in the, in the, the book of Education, page 57, paragraph 3 says, the greatest want of the world is the want of men. Men who could not be bought or sold. Men who in their inmost souls are true and honest. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Men whose duty to concerns is uh, true as the needle to the pole. Men who could stand for the right to the heavens fall. So Revelation 18 verse 1 and 2, we see an angel. We realize that an angel is someone who is having a message. So the message is coming from heaven and it's with great power. So. The book of 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 is speaking of angels. Who are these angels? These are God's people in these last days. They are, great, they are of great power and mighty. These, there is a kind of groups which are forming. 
those who would not be faithful, they would be accusing other ones. My team was accuse me not. Whereas angels which are great in power and the mighty bring not rearing accusation against them before the Lord. Because these who are mighty and the power, they speak the truth, though the heavens fall. These will remain faithful. So the accusation in heaven was against those people who were faithful, against the angels of God who were faithful. So in these last days, we have also an angel. We have people who have the message of the last angel, the fourth angel, which is with, with great power and is lightening the world with the glory of God. And it, this messenger must cry mighty with a strong voice, saying to the world that the Babylon, the great is fallen. You point the sin by its right name. It is fallen, and it's become the habitation of devils and the horror of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful part. Let's see. Uh, in Micah chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, what is happening among God's people is this. But truly, I'm full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment. So this angel, a messenger here like Mika, is that truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord, like, Eli like Elijah, who was led by the Spirit of the Lord. God's people must be led by the Spirit of the Lord, of the Lord in these last days. But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of mighty. So there is power, there is judgment, and there is might. To do what? To declare unto Jacob. So we must start first unto Jacob, the house of God. We must check the house of God. It must be cleansed because it, we must have seen. Here at this, I pray you, ye heads of the house of Jacob. So the message must go to the heads of, uh, of the church, the heads of the leaders, or the key leaders. Because they have set themselves as, uh, as what? They don't want the Lord to lead them. They want, don't want to hear the spirit of the Lord to lead them. They judge by their own standards. Hear this, I pray you, you heads of the house of Jacob and the princes of the house of Israel, that uphold judgment and the pervert or equity. So they uphold judgment and the pervert or equity. So this is what the Bible was saying. Uh, they passed under crooked generation, perverse generation. They, their spot is not a spot of his children, so they have corrupted themselves. Let's see, as we are trying to wind up. In the book of Micah chapter 3, verse 1 and 4, and I said, here I pray you, uh, uh, here and I, uh, here I pray you, O house of Jacob, and you princess of the house of Israel. Is it not for you to know judgment? So the Lord is asking in these last days that God's people must know judgment. They must know the judgment of the Lord. They must show the people their transgressions. And the message of the three angels, first angels' messages, is that it is frying the midst of heaven, preparing the people, actually the people of the earth, and they're saying that God's judgment is just uh, upon us so that they can be ready. Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. So there is a cross, a cross, a cross of propitiation for God's people. In verses 4 of Micah chapter 3, verse 4, then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves here in their doings. Why? They are fallen from is high estate. They have lowered the standards so that they can, they can accommodate men. So nowadays we have many people in our churches, but they don't even want to hear the spirit of prophecy. What would the Lord do with them? God is admonishing his own people that they may hearken to his voice, that they may be ready in such a time like this and follow the voice of the Lord. Micah 3, 5, that says the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people to hear, that by their teeth and cry peace, and he has put not into their mouths. They even prepare war against his own people. We have seen that one. Therefore, night shall be unto you, that you shall not have a vision. So in these last days, these people will not have a vision. They will not follow the light. They will not know the light. They will be sleeping, sleeping, as the book of Isaiah somewhere, I believe Isaiah 56, even not 57, is saying they are sleeping what? Sleeping in dogs, like loving to slumber. Even the book of Proverbs says a little sleep, a, a little more slumber, 
And that's when you tell him go outside and preach, he says there is a lion outside. I cannot go outside. And it shall be dark unto you. There will be no vision, it will be dark. But they don't know that the midnight is just here, that you shall not be divine, and the sun shall go down over the prophet. So the Lord Jesus, who is the light, will not be reading them. And the day shall be dark over them. Then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confounded. Yeah, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of God. Do you remember a person in the Old Testament, a king, who never received an answer from God? It was King Saul. Why? Because he just followed his own counsel. He never did the bidings of God. God saw his heart that it has started repairing against him. And that case is to increase to the latter time of the end. Uh, from the book Testament to the Church, uh, Volume 2, page 553, uh, uh, paragraph 2, it says, they had a righteousness of their own. This uh, are the people, about these people in these last days, they had a righteousness of their own, which was a fit of a spirit rags, and which God can in no case accept. These persons had no love for union and harmony of action. So what is supposed to be, what we are supposed to have in these last days is harmony. If someone is working in the course of God, doing God a service, we should not be judging them. We should be telling them, go, do it more and more. You should encourage that person to continue with the work. They delighted in disorder, confusion, distraction, and diversity of opinion were their choice. They were ungovernable. When you hear the voice that they were ungovernable, it's the same message we have seen in the book of uh, Second Peter that these people were presumptuous and self-willed. They are not. They are uh, not afraid to speak uh, evil of uh, the uh, divinities or of the government of heaven. There is somewhere it was saying that uh, they never wanted the leadership of heaven. Oh, they despise the government of heaven. They must know that the God of heaven rules in uh, uh, rules on earth. So unsubdued, unregenerated, and un unconsecrated. And this element of confusion suited their undisciplined mind. So these people have not even the clothes such like they must be disciplined so that they can appear to be children of God. They were a curse to the cause of God and brought this, the name of 70 day Adventists into disrepute. Why? Because they were not ready. If you read the book of Second Peter, chapter 2, chapter 2, verses uh, 14, that one we'll cover next time. It is saying that having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin. They cannot cease from sin. But in these last days, God's people are being called to do what? They must cease from sin. We are being called that we should pray, we should struggle with God to do what? To cease from sin. We should cease to having adultery, mingling with the word, that is adultery. And also, beguiling and stable souls, they are welcoming more people and more people to follow the same path rather than calling them to have victory over sin. So, and as they have exercised with covetous practices, they are cursed children. That is verse 14, cursed children. When you hear the Lord calling a people cursed children, that profession must be crossing for them. They were cursed to the cause of God and brought the name of 70 day Adventists into uh, disrepute. I'm about to wind up, but generally, Micah chapter 3, verses 8 to 10, it says, but truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord, and of judgment, and of mighty, to declare unto Jacob his transgression, and to Israel his sin. So Israel must know of this message. Hear this, I pray you, you heads of the house. It goes directly to the house of God, uh, house of Jacob, and the princes of the house of Israel, that uphold judgment and pervert all equity. They build up Zion with blood. You know? There is a person who is known as uh, Paul, while he was preaching to the, to the Jews in that time. Remember the church then, who rejected the voice of God, they were rejected. Those angels, those messengers were rejected, and the message was to be taken to the Gentiles. Paul was saying to these people, you have rejected me. I will go far to the Gentiles. I will go to the Gentiles. Why? He said, your blood be upon yourselves. But what about these last days? 
How are the people doing? They are building up Jerusalem with what? With the blood, because they are not giving the people the message. So the blood will be upon them. They are not faithful watchmen. They build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. The, that is the same message in Micah chapter 3, verse 10. It's the same message we find in the second Peter chapter 2, verse for, chapter 2, verse 14, what it was saying. They cannot cease from sin. So the pure Jerusalem with iniquity, with sin, come as the way you are. Continue the way you are. God is merciful. That is the message they give in these last days. Um, and this message, you shall go and continue reading from Moses chapter 4, verse 2 and 4. I've just went uh, about to end up. My time is over. Uh, is that they are by swearing, lying, and killing, and stealing? Okay, all this one they are doing, uh, all this. But there is a message which I wanted to hear, which you are saying that by swearing, and lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, they break out, and blood touches blood. Therefore, shall the land mourn. So and everyone that is dwelt therein shall languish, shall languish. Where are they languishing? The same message we find in Isaiah chapter 24, that the world is moving to and fro, about to fall. The world is languishing. Why? Because they have transgressed the laws of God. Will God's people be joining them? That's a question for us to ponder. With the beast of the field. So the beast of the field are the people of the world. These are the beast of the field. The book of Isaiah somewhere says, come here, beast of the field, come to the world. So God is going to send his messengers to those unfaithful leaders who are leading the church so-called, and they will enter the house of God. You know what happened in the destruction of Jerusalem. They will come, come here, the beast of the field. So the world will languish the beast of the field and the force of the heaven. Yeah, the fishes of the, of the sea also shall be taken away. You remember? The fishes of the feet of the sea are God's people. They are the same people who should be uh, in this time of the end. Fishing should be done actually to avest them. Yet, let no man strive, no reprove another. For Thai people are they that strive with the priest. These people they are striving with the message which comes to them in these last days. Lastly, uh, great controversy. Uh, great controversy. Page 60, paragraph 3 says this words. The condition of the world under the Romish power presented a fearful and striking fulfillment of the words of the prophet of Sir. Remember, in this great controversy, page 60, here it is called the noon of the papacy. It is where all the world was wandering after the papacy. Because time was not on my side, but generally the message here is they followed the ways of the world. All people were following them, but not in the light course. So, here it was quoted, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject it. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. So the cause here is that forgetting the law of God. The law of God, God commands, we follow. And when we follow the law, we know that law, the Lord of heaven is ruling among men. I will also forget their children because they have forgotten their this part. And uh, they have forgotten uh, the Lord, and the Lord also will for, just forget him. Um, okay, this is the end. It was saying uh, uh, about the heads. I've taken time, but sorry for that course. So just like four to five minutes. The heads thereof, thereof judge for reward, and the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets therefore divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. So God's people are also saying in these last days in the same cause, the Lord is among us. Even as Jeremiah was saying elsewhere, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord is this. We are the chosen people, but are we doing the commission? Are we doing the mission of our Father? So we should go forward without fear, without the direction of men, going and following the light which shines from heaven with great power and mighty. So the heads of the of uh, the leaders, they are they want more. They are investing more. They want actually they, that sleeping dogs. They are actually uh, is that they are feeding for what for hire. They are teaching for hire. I wanted to remember the book of Isaiah, but I can't remember it right away. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. 
where, uh, where do you remember this statement to riot in the daytime? This is the prodigal son who was who went and did riot with what? With the treasure which his father gave him. They were he was rioting with in the daytime. So they they are sports, uh, sports they are and the blemishes. So if they have blemishes, they don't have the attire, the clothing of the wedding, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. So they will be mingling with us if they don't for the path of the Lord. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and a crooked generation. So Elijah's message in these last days is, it is a crooked generation, like it was the time of the Jews in that time, uh, in these last days. These people, if they don't follow the light of God in this course, because we have seen people rejecting the voice of prophecy, they would not be shining. They would be, their kiss of their brethren as recorded in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 10. So, there is this voice in the councils, in the reproofs. It is the Lord's message, message, message of light to his people. If we wait for louder calls or a better opportunities, the light may be withdrawn and we left in darkness, like the Jews who are left in darkness. We should do the work while it is daytime. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, brethren, for joining. Thank you, brethren, for what we have shared this evening. May God bless you just in a brief way. God bless you, and uh, thank you. Uh, take over. Yeah, at this time, I kindly I invite um, uh, Elder uh, Enoch uh, Kinara uh, to lead us uh, into a special prayer session. Elder Kinara. Thank you very much, um, Tumishi, for the message. Let us pray. Our Almighty Father in heaven, we come before thy throne this evening to thank you because you have been with us throughout the day and even from the time that we left each other on an occasion like this last Friday. Lord God, we thank you because you have taken care of us. You have given us provisions. You have given us good health and you have provided direction for us as your children. Now, Lord, we know that amongst us are those who are bereaved, who have lost loved ones. We, Lord, bring their families into thy presence, that Lord, you may comfort them at this time. You may give them the hope of resurrection, that Lord, the, the loved ones who have left ahead of them, there will be an opportunity if we are faithful to meet at that res resurrection morning. We pray Lord, that even as they prepare to lay their loved ones to their resting places, that Lord, you will provide for them. You will also give them your grace. We pray, Lord, for those who have sick ones in their, in their, in their homes and in hospitals. Lord, we pray that you visit with these sick ones, that they may be able, Lord, to receive your healing mercies that you will touch them, Lord, with your mighty healing hand, and they shall be well. Lord, your name will be glorified when we see your children who are currently suffering and pained, walking out of their sick beds to be able to declare that you have healed them. Lord God, we are also praying for many others who have various challenges. There are those, Lord, who may not have means of having to put food on the table at this time. We have those who cannot even manage to buy simple clothes that they can put on. We have those Lord who have no shelter where they can put their heads. Lord, we pray for all this, that because your promise that Lord, 
you will be their God and you are their God, they will have that hope that they will come out of this one of these days. Lord God, we pray for your work, your work that is going on all over the world and even in our local situations here. Lord, here we are having your work going on through crusades in Kawangware, in Kebra, in Mulongo. Lord, we know that you are with your children. You are with your servants who are bringing out the truth about the end to these people, Lord, who may not have known you, who may not have received this word. Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to dwell amongst the servants who are in this work and even the resources that are being employed there. Lord, we pray that you provide everything and that Lord, at the end of it, we will see fruits coming out of these efforts so that Lord, we may go home. We pray that Lord, you may be with those of your servants who have not received the correct message that Lord at this time and in this period of the end, they may also receive through various means Lord you have provided in this world. Their social media means, their crusades that are person to person and Lord there are evangelists and pastors who are, who, who are busy propagating your word. May you provide Lord that they may have this word, the truth, fall on fertile ground, that Lord, we may see your second coming hastened because your children have received this word all over the world. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us this evening. And thank you for the, the word that we have received through your servant. And we pray that Lord, his ministry may prosper as he continues to bring out this truth that many in our own midst, many in our churches have refused or ignored to tell and warn the people of the days of the end and the signs of the end. Lord, may you continue to do so through the many servants that you have put all over the world. Lord, now as we are going to separate, to go to rest for the night, we pray that Lord, you be with us Allow us to see each other again when you will give us an opportunity because I'll pray trusting in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, thank you, Elder Akinara. Uh, Evangelist um, Osiemo, I kindly give a final benediction. Evangelist Osimo, I don't know whether you're hearing me. I think he's not on. Yeah. So uh, he must have left, so I can't see him. Okay. At uh, uh, this time, I uh, thank uh, each and every one of you who found uh, time to uh, join our virtual church uh, tonight. I just to remind you that again, we will uh, meet in the same platform uh, on Friday uh, for our Friday uh, Vespers. Uh, God bless you and uh, see you on Friday. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you are free to uh, log out.